Modern day San Francisco, Market Street. 100 years ago, America held its first and last Preparedness Day Parade to excite civilians about entering World War I. What started out as a sunny day in California soon spiraled into something unexpected. Preparedness Day was a march, I believe, in 1916. It was a massive march on Market Street, which is behind me. It was essentially by pro-war folks in San Francisco who wanted the U.S. to enter World War I. It had not yet entered the war. It was a giant march. Lots of people were against the march on the left in the progressive community and also kind of anarchist radicals. Um, thinking that it would be a war that we entered where capitalists were fighting capitalists so they didn't really care, it wasn't part of their larger struggle. Uh, you know, they had lots of different people they followed, Bakunin, you know, had Russian anarchists, you had lots of different anarchists, but I mean, they were kind of worshippers in a way of the deed. Anarchy was flourishing in 1916, and there was no telling what the anarchists would do. By 22nd, 1916, as units were assembled, an anonymous terrorist bomb exploded, 10 people were killed immediately, 40 more injured seriously. The next week, a bunch of labor figures, not especially significant ones, were arrested. Two of them were charged with murder. One was convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment. The other was convicted and sentenced to hang at San Quentin. The bomb shook the city. Hundreds of people were calling it an act of terrorism. With 10 dead, people feared for their lives. And the parade was so long that it kept going on the other end even when the bomb had gone off, so people didn't realize what had really happened. To find out who had done this, they arrested lots of people charged to, one of them is Tom Mooney. Thomas Mooney was a labor leader who had drawn attention to himself before. Mooney was from Boston originally. He was, I guess you could say, he was a feisty sort. He was a labor figure, but not an especially tactful one. In fact, a lot of people, even his own people who should have been his allies, didn't much like him. Mooney had a bold demeanor. He challenged everything he was faced with. Naturally, businessmen thought he was a pariah. Labor figures would have been just as happy to see him put away in jail where he would be out of their hair. He appeared in films advocating his freedom. He was more kind of this well-known character after, after the fact. They organized strikes to petition for justice, rallying hundreds. A couple of uh, some labor leaders or labor figures will just decide to organize a strike on their own. After the trials, people started advocating for Mooney's freedom. Mooney tried to help Warren K. Billings get released soon after. Warren Billings had been a shoe lining cutter uh, who unfortunately got himself convicted for transporting dynamite to Sacramento. Those defendants, although there's no evidence against them, spent 23 years in jail. They weren't released until 1939. They became the faces of injustice in California. Later it was found that these two individuals had kind of been thrown to the wolves and they were not guilty. If you have this kind of event, in a city and nobody is caught and nobody is prosecuted, it looks bad for the powers that be. Billings got out of jail, uh, finally in 1939, a few months after Mooney did. He was part, he was released on bay, he was released, however, on parole. It took much longer for Billings to be released. People started to question the judicial system. Billings and Mooney, you might say, were victims of guilt by association. He was not in San Francisco when he said he was, and this came out in a series of letters that he wrote to an old associate saying, come to San Francisco and say you saw me here. This led to further investigation showing Mooney and his associate were innocent. He was convicted, but the evidence in favor of him was overwhelming. He and his wife were photographed at a building which still stands, it's called the Eilers Building, and they were photographed on the roof of the building watching the parade while a street clock below them showed two minutes past two o'clock, the same time that a prosecution witness said he saw them over a mile away deposit that suitcase. And in fact, Billings and Money both had ironclad alibis, but essentially because of who they were, the juries went ahead and convicted them anyway. At the time, in San Francisco, Emma Goldman, I don't know if you've heard of Emma Goldman, she's an anarchist, her and her lover, they had a magazine that they ran here called Blast. 
And so she was uh, interviewed and arrested temporarily as part of the investigation. Kind of an unfortunate title because mm -hmm. people associated with the bomb throwing. Alexander Berkman wrote in The Blast, Before a garden can bloom, the weeds must be uprooted. Nothing is therefore more important than to destroy. Nothing more necessary and difficult. The police were probably just sweeping up anybody who was on the left, from unionists to anarcho-syndicalists to anyone else who would fit the bill of somebody who might actually do something violent. There had been a series of strikes beginning with a bitter waterfront strike in 1901, other strikes, and then this happened and it was used as an excuse essentially to suppress the labor movement, the bombing. This enabled the state to come in, arrest them, and kick them out of the country, and some of them were convicted. Both men were considered left-wingers, left-wing left labor agitators. Uh, relations between business and labor in San Francisco were generally very bad. If you did, if you had, say, radical views, or if people thought you had, you were considered a dangerous person who probably should be put away anyhow. The Anarchist Party was rallying so many people that it seemed the police would use any justification to crush the movement. Again, they could have had no leads, they could have torn everything up that they could at the time, so you have enough leftists and enough kind of ferment in the political world to not know if it's, not, it could be any of these people or none of them. The city was like a powder keg. San Francisco was like the world in miniature. All it took was something to set it off. That something was planted by someone whose identity remains a mystery. <laughs> 